Thank you for joining me for another reading through the New Testament. Today we're in Luke chapter 17, English Standard Version. And Jesus said to his disciples, Temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were cast into the sea than that he would cause one of these little ones to sin. Pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you could say to his mulberry bush, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Will any one of you who has a servant plowing or keeping sheep say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and recline at table? Will he not rather say to him, prepare supper for me and dress properly and serve me while I eat and drink and afterwards you will eat and drink? Does he thank the servant because he did what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what is our duty. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers, who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they were cleansed, then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus answered them, The kingdom of God is not coming in ways that can be observed. Nor will they say, Look, here it is, or there, for behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. And he said to the disciples, The days are coming when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, Look there, or look here, do not go out to follow them. For as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. And just as it is in the days of Noah, so will it be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking and marrying and being given in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, just as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But on the day when Lot went out from Sodom, fire and sulfur rained from heaven and destroyed all of them. And so it will be on the day when the Son of Man is revealed. On that day let the one who is on the housetop with his goods in the house not come down to take them away, and likewise let the one who is in the field not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life will keep it. I tell you, in that night there will be two in one bed, one will be taken and the other left. There will be two women grinding together, and one will be taken and the other left. And they said to him, Where, Lord? And he said to them, Where the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. As Jesus begins his approach to Jerusalem, his preaching becomes more specific and yet at the same time, uh, not vague, but uh, covered. That is, <clears throat> even as we concluded in this, conclu this uh, reading, when will this all take to place, Lord? And Jesus said, where the cor corpse is, the vultures will gather. Where dead things are, you will see that they're there, dead. And I think that's his point, that in Luke 17, as he begins to talk about things that are to be in the future, they're things that will be self-evident when they come in the future. 
And as we look at chapter 17 in the conclusion, when he talks about the coming of the Son of Man, this is something that I believe is not in our future. It's still, it's in our past now. But to the audience to whom Jesus spoke, it was their future. They were talking about the kingdom of God coming. And Jesus' response to them was, you can't see the kingdom coming in the way that you think. Instead, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. Um, one translation gives a sense within you. But I think the idea is that wherever the king was, the kingdom was there. And Jesus was in their midst. And so the kingdom was there in the presence of Jesus. And then from that, he begins talking about, well, you'll desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man. And the Son of Man in his day, he'll speak of, where they were eating and drinking and living life. But then his reminder is <clears throat> that when they're in that day, just like in the days of Noah, just like in the days of Sodom, when God finally brought his judgment upon the people of that context, it came. And so what's he setting as the stage for a future conversation is the destruction of Jerusalem. That in AD 30, he will die. His messengers will carry the gospel to the generation that lived then. And then finally, at the end of that generation in AD 70, will Jerusalem fall to the Romans. And God will make his mark that the end of his relationship with them as a nation has come. But what is the takeaway from our chapter that makes today strong? I've always been encouraged by his statement in verse 21 that the kingdom of God is within you or in the midst of you. That the kingdom of God is not oftentimes what we contrive it to be as humans. We want it to be something big and grand by what we define that to be. <clears throat> but instead, the kingdom of God is very certain. It's the rule of God in your life. And so I would suggest that the takeaway to make today strong is to listen to that truth. That the kingdom of God is all around you. When Jesus is in your presence that as king, his presence makes the kingdom there. So bring Jesus to your life and obey him and keep him close. And then you will be like that 10th leper, even a Samaritan, who would know that every time the blessing that comes from God comes, God is to be thanked. Thank you for your time. And join me again for another reading through the New Testament tomorrow, trying to make your weekdays strong with the Word of God.